Hello and welcome back to Car Rental University. I am your host, Alex Witherow. Today we're gonna to talk about what is the best side hustle going into 2023. Is it Airbnb or is it car rentals? Before I get into that, click below, grab the five things you must do before starting a car rental business. Lots of great information in there. Give this channel a subscribe. We're constantly talking about things that pertain to the car share industry. So, you know, this is an interesting conversation because I get a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of interest out there with Airbnb. Um, I was very active in Airbnb back in like 2014, 2015. Um, I almost exclusively lived off of that before car rentals when I was in New York City but then they outlawed it in the city and they like seriously cracked down on it. So it, you, you couldn't even do anything with Airbnb anymore. Um, it is still available, but they're only allowing private rooms in Manhattan. So, you know, this is a thing, you know, and, and then obviously, um, you know, so most people are familiar with Airbnb. They understand how it works. Um, and then obviously car rentals is like a kind of a newer thing. You know, we, this is both are in the asset share space. Um, one is, you know, dealing with property. The other is dealing with car rentals. So, you know, the question is this, is which is better? Which is, you know, the way to go? Now, from what I've seen in the last four or five years, I would say, with Airbnb, is that most cities, municipalities are catching up to Airbnb and like figuring out how to handle the whole situation. So, you know, I don't know if you've followed Airbnb or not, but it is has been a very controversial thing, especially amongst property management companies, especially amongst city municipalities, um, especially if like especially amongst like neighbors and neighborhoods. You know, a lot of people just hate it when you know if you own a house in a neighborhood and your next door neighbor is you know Airbnb the place out and they're throwing parties, or if they're not throwing parties, but just you know there's a constant flow in and out of people. That's probably not ideal for you as a neighbor, but um, you know, so what I've seen is that, you know, I can speak for, I know Los Angeles is like this. I know Atlanta's like this now. Um, and you know, basically what I've seen is happening is that you have to have a license now to get, uh, to be able to Airbnb your property in a city. Uh, that's happening in a lot of places now. To do that, you must have ownership of the house. And so therefore, that requires ownership <laughs> and a lot more money. Um, <clears throat> you know, so in the old days, people would just like Airbnb out their place for a weekend or so and pay for a, you know, a vacation. Uh, people in New York used to do this all the time. They'd Airbnb out their room or um, their apartment for a weekend or week while they were gone. And then, you know, they would basically pay for their own vacation wherever they were going. I did that. Uh, it was a great deal. Aside from doing that, I had, you know, two or three other apartments in the city. Now, um, you know, this is the deal is that like, you know, the old days, the barrier to entry for Airbnb was very low. The barrier for entry now for Airbnb is getting much higher. You have to be a homeowner to do uh, Airbnb. So, you know, we're back to the rich getting richer. So in my opinion, I think that, um, you know, with car rentals, it's a much lower barrier to entry. Now, you know, the kind of, it's the kind of thing where it may feel um, easier just on your psyche if you have, if you're managing, you know, two, three, four properties that are houses, right? Like how much damage can actually be done by a person to a house? Whereas a lot of damage can be done by a person to a car. Um, you know, so that's kind of, you know, I think that it, it, people kind of, you know, juggle that level of, okay, well, can I trust other people to, to do, you know, to take care of my assets if they're going to rent them out. And, you know, this is the thing about my feeling about car share is this though, you know, for the most part, people are good actors. Um, and I say that with a caveat saying that you're assuming you're operating on get around or Turo. Um, you know, I would say that you know, this is the kind of thing where nowadays it is much more, uh, it's much easier to break into the car rental share, car share space. And, you know, if, you know, making, I mean, you think about it, like in the old days, I would profit about 2000 to maybe 2,500 a month in New York or in North Jersey on, you know, Airbnb. That, that was my profit. Whereas with one car, um, I'm profiting anywhere from like 
600 to maybe 1200 a month based on the time of year. So basically two cars is the same as one house um, or one apartment, um, which in my opinion, it's much easier to get up to two cars than one house. Um, you know, so I, I think that the barrier to entry for um, car share is way, way easier these days than it was, than it is now for Airbnb. But if we had this conversation four or five years ago, it would have been a different thing. So um, overall, I think that, you know, um, you know, I, 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 I'm a big proponent of, this is kind of why I moved into the car share space because, you know, the Airbnb game was getting so sticky and being sued so much up in New York. Um, and in many other municipalities around the country, obviously the hotel lobby has been fighting them for obvious reasons, um, especially in New York, <clears throat> you know, but I think, um, I don't foresee any, you know, it's not like Hertz or Enterprises waging war against Turo or, um, get around. So, you know, the coast is pretty clear for those companies at this point. And I think, you know, the car share space is just still, in a very minor infancy. I mean, I, I think we've only hit five or 10% of the industry's capacity, and I think that it's gonna keep growing. And I think it's a way for people to really, um, you know, can, they can build, you know, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 a month of a base income uh, just through car rentals and car share. Um, so, you know, that's, that's my stance on this. I think these days, uh, just the way things have gone in different cities, um, you know, and what I see now with Airbnbs is that they're mostly owned and operated by like corporate management companies. So the whole Airbnb thing to me is becoming very corporate and it's becoming very much like a hotel anyway. Um, so, you know, I still think that, you know, the way car share is right now, it's very much more ground level grassroots giving um, just small business entrepreneurs that money uh, to, to you know bolster their own lifestyle, which I think is great. That's something I feel really strongly about. That's a large reason why I run this channel. Uh, so all that to say, in my opinion, for 2023, car share is the way to go for side hustles. I think it's way easier to get into the game. All you, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> all you need is a one or two cars to get rolling and you're off and, and going. You've got, you're making the same amount of money as you would with one single family home property. Uh, so anyway, drop some comments below. Let me know what you think. Uh, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. If you've tried both, uh, definitely would be interested to hear that. Before I go, click below, grab the five things you must do before starting a car rental business. I will catch you in the next episode. Thank you.